Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Minister Zhang Shan, for that introduction. And especially thank you to President Xi and Madame Peng for serving as such warm and gracious hosts to Melania and me during our time here in your very, very beautiful country. To both the American delegation and to the Chinese business representatives here, your discussions greatly strengthen our partnership and provides a critical bridge between our business community and yours, and thank you for that. During my time in Beijing, President Xi and I have had several conversations about our common goals and interests. Beyond that, we talk often. There's a very good chemistry between the two of us, believe me. My administration is committed to improving our trade and business relationships with China. And this relationship is something which we are working very hard to make a fair and a reciprocal one. Trade between China and the United States has not been, over the last many, many years, a very fair one for us. As we all know, America has a huge annual trade deficit with China, a number beyond anything what anybody would understand. This number is shockingly hundreds of billions of dollars each year. Estimates are as high as $500 billion a year. We must immediately address the unfair trade practices that drive this deficit, along with barriers to market success. We really have to look at access, forced technology transfer, and the theft of intellectual property, which just by and of itself is costing the United States and its companies at least $300 billion a year. Both the United States and China will have a more prosperous future if we can achieve a level economic playing field. Right now, unfortunately, it is a very one-sided and unfair one. But, but, I don't blame China. <laughs> After all, who can blame a country for being able to take advantage of another country for the benefit of its citizens? I give China great credit. <laughs> but in actuality, I do blame past administrations for allowing this out-of-control trade deficit to take place and to grow. We have to fix this because it just doesn't work for our great American companies, and it doesn't work for our great American workers. It is just not sustainable. I look forward to working toward that goal and to pursuing fair and lasting engagement. At home, my administration is supporting American workers and American businesses by eliminating burdensome regulations and lifting restrictions on American energy and all other businesses. Restrictions are being seriously lifted. Our work is already taking hold. The stock market in the United States is at an all-time high adding already $5.5 trillion in new wealth since the very, very well-known and now very important November 8th election. Unemployment is at a 17-year low, and so many other great things are happening to the United States, economically and otherwise, frankly, too many to mention. Abroad, we're committed to a free and open Indo-Pacific-based respect for the rule of law, private enterprise, and trade reciprocity. In order to achieve prosperity, we must also have security. Security cooperation is critical to addressing a range of emerging threats throughout the Indo-Pacific region and around the world, and I have been very encouraged by my conversations, both over the last number of weeks and, in particular, 
last night and this morning with President Xi. We're very, very much on the same plane when it comes to security. We both want it for our countries, and we both want it for the world. Chief among these threats is the North Korean nuclear menace. As I stated in my address to the National Assembly in Seoul yesterday, the United States is committed to the complete and permanent denuclearization of North Korea. So important. China can fix this problem easily and quickly. And I am calling on China and your great president to hopefully work on it very hard. I know one thing about your president. If he works on it hard, it will happen. There's no doubt about it. They know. <laughs> we call on all nations to implement UN Security Council sanctions and resolutions and to cease doing business with the North Korean regime. All nations must come together to ensure that this rogue regime cannot threaten the world with its nuclear weapons. I thank President Xi for his recent efforts to restrict trade with North Korea and to cut off all banking ties. Mr. President, thank you, and thank you to all of the Chinese business leaders here today for standing with the United States and our coalition of responsible nations. But time is quickly running out. We must act fast. And hopefully, China will act faster and more effectively on this problem than anyone. I'm also calling on Russia to help rein in this potentially very tragic situation. The contributions of the business community represented here today are vital to our efforts to ensure peace and prosperity for our two nations. Together, we can unlock a future of opportunity, wealth, and dignity far beyond anybody's wildest dreams. In your discussions today, I hope you will learn from each other and identify new ways to advance our economic cooperation. I am depending on all of you to work together to find opportunities of mutual agreement and shared prosperity. The hardworking people of America and the hardworking people of China deserve the very best solutions to achieve prosperity, happiness, and peace. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, President Trump. And now, please welcome Mr. Xi Jinping, President of the People's Republic of China. The Honorable President Trump. Chinese and American business representatives, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. It is my real pleasure to have President Trump with us today for this China-U.S. business exchange. Over the years, the business communities of our two countries have been committed to the friendship between our two nations you are a strong driving force for economic cooperation and overall relations between our two countries. Your commitments and your contribution are highly appreciated. This year marks the 45th anniversary of the Shanghai Communique. Over the past 45 years, China-U.S. economic relations and trade ties have achieved historic development, delivering great benefits to our two peoples. Last year, the General Motors, Ford, and Fiat Chrysler, the three U.S. automakers, manufactured and sold over 5 million vehicles in China. The number was bigger 
than their combined sales in other parts of the world. The Chinese investment in the United States is also rising rapidly and has created over 140,000 jobs directly for the local communities in the United States. During President Trump's visit this time, as we have witnessed right now, our companies will sign commercial contracts and two-way investment agreements worth over 250 billion US dollars. These are great examples of the vast potential and win-win nature of China-US economic cooperation. The Honorable President Trump, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, you must be interested in the Chinese economy and China-US economic relations. Let me share with you my following thoughts in this regard. First, the Chinese economy enjoys bright prospects. The Chinese economy is now shifting from the stage of high-speed growth to one of high-quality growth. The first three quarters of this year have seen our GDP growing by 6.9 percent. But more important thing is the structure of the Chinese economy is being upgraded. Going forward, the Chinese economy has the foundation, the right conditions, and the momentum for continued growth. China has a big population, and the dividends of population will continue to be released. We have a prospering market, and we have rich sources of uh, economic growth. During this year, the IMF has revised up its forecast about the Chinese economy for a number of times. This reflects its optimism in the Chinese economy. Second, China is unswervingly committed to reform and opening up. Reform and opening up are critical to China's development. We will further deepen the supply-side structural reform and introduce strong and concrete measures of reform in market, fiscal and taxation, financial investment and financing areas, and related to the state-owned enterprises. We will take big strides in comprehensively deepening reform. Opening up is China's basic state policy. China will not close its door of opening up and will open it even wider. We will act on the blueprint laid out by the 19th Party Congress of the CPC, break new grounds in opening up on all fronts. Foreign companies in China, including the American companies, will find the business environment here more open, more transparent, and more orderly. Third, China-U.S. business cooperation has vast potential. As the biggest developing and developed country, China and the United States have much more areas for economic cooperation rather than competition. It is estimated that in the coming five years, China will import $8 trillion of goods. Chinese citizens will take 700 million overseas travels. These mean vast potential for economic cooperation between our two countries. China is willing to expand its imports of uh, LNG, crude oil, and petroleum products and other energy projects, products from the United States. We will also explore the potential of U.S. exports of beef, cotton, and other agricultural products to China. We will also deepen cooperation on service trade, including in the areas of tourism, movie, and education, while we also hope the U.S. will further ease its export control on civilian technologies and products to China. 
we will continue to encourage Chinese companies to invest in the United States and also welcome active participation of American companies and financial institutions in the Belt and Road projects. With our economic relations expanding rapidly, it is natural that we may have differences from time to time. The important thing is we act in the spirit of mutual benefit and mutual understanding and seek proper settlement through dialogue and consultation. A Chinese philosopher once observed that trading can generate friendship and mutual benefit. Looking ahead, I have full confidence that with joint efforts of you, the business representatives present here today, and the business communities of our two countries, China-U.S. economic relations will achieve greater success on the basis of equality and mutual benefit, and our two peoples will gain increasing benefits along this process. Thank you.